Hello gentlemen, today we're going to be breaking down one of the best blitzes in the entire game, which is going to be out of the dollar formation. So this is, in my opinion, I'd say the best formation on defense right now. 6-1 uh, is good, but I don't really consider it elite because really you're praying for disengages. That is your version of pressure. Not that the not that it's inconsistent, but it's just you don't know on any given play if your guys are going to come in or not. Meanwhile, with this blitz, you know what you're getting. You're sending four people and you're probably getting one free. And that's my ideal way of playing defense. Um, and then we also have another counter setup. If they try to block our blitz, we can send another guy and get somebody free still. So we're going to talk about two setups. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things that are pretty important before I get into the blitz setup. So first of all, like I said, I'm in dollar. Now the playbook does matter. It can't just be any dollar because we're in cover two press for this play. And this can only be found in multiple D as well as the four six playbook. If you play mutt, I recommend using four six. I do think it's the better playbook. If you have a custom, this obviously doesn't matter, but otherwise uh, you're not gonna find this play in your dollar. I don't think. Again, let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong. So cover two press. Now the coaching adjustments do matter here. So we're gonna click our right stick in. Make sure you have your auto flip off. I'll explain that part in a second. And then auto alignment on base. Those are your two requirements. As for everything else, we're not gonna be talking about adjusting out of this blitz today. So we can leave all of our zone drops on default. So let's go ahead and talk about cover two press. And we'll do it against verticals because we send everybody out on that play. Okay, now let's get into the blitz setup. It's very simple, but I do need to talk about why we do not flip our defense at any point. And it's because it only works off the left side. I have no idea why it's like that. EA is very weird about their coding and they have just random inconsistencies like that. So really, if you flip it like this and you run it with this blitzing linebacker on the right, it is not going to come in nearly at the same frequency as it does off the left. So I just wanted to make that very clear. Let's move this guy back. So the setup is very simple. The first step is technically optional and it's press your defense. That is not required to make the blitz work. Uh, what is required to make the blitz work is definitely pinching your defensive line. And then you're gonna be using this linebacker here, blitz him, put him right next to the nose tackle until this blitzing arrow goes basically straight down, just like this. After the ball is snapped, I recommend hovering for just a second. And there is your pressure. That is what it looks like. He's gonna come up, I think it's the A gap. Let's take a look. As you can see, he comes right down into the A gap. It is not the absolute fastest blitz in the world. However, it does have a pinch defensive line, so it's gonna be stout against the run. And this is going to come in a large majority of the time if you do it correctly. And when you're sending four and getting one free, that's always gonna be a successful blitz. So what we're going to do is just run this a few more times and just show you it's consistent. Now, what you're gonna notice there is the linebacker comes down into the gap. You do not want that. You want to just move him back about you know five yards or so to about that position and it should still work right there it didn't and that's just one of the bad things about it i would say maybe spread your linebackers next time that happens that way he gets into a consistent location so let's try that again he's in his proper spot right now as you can see he comes in notice how i'm hovering in the gap for just like half a second before i go out into coverage See how he kind of, the right guard pays attention to me. Left guard, I really have no idea why the left guard and left tackle are double teaming that guy, but they are. And that's kind of what enables this guy to come in. So do it again. As you can see, there's the pressure. And it's going to be very consistent for you. Now I'll do it one more time, then we'll talk about a counter blitz. So like right here, good example, that guy comes down into the gap. Let's just spread our linebackers and see how he does. He is maybe a little too far outside, but we'll see how it does here. He still comes in. So that's what I recommend doing. That, uh, that basically makes it so you don't have to touch him. You can literally just use your controls to get him back into a consistent location. And then he will come in cleanly, just like that. So next we're gonna talk about the counter blitz setup. So if your opponent starts blocking his running back and it's picking up your four man pretty well, we have another setup on how to still get pressure against that blocked running back. Now, before I do that, I just wanna give a heads up that Matster has a full breakdown on dollar and he actually has a really good B gap blitz 
out of this exact play. If you guys want to see that blitz, check it out on acemana.com. Just become a member. You'll gain access to his defense as well as everything else that's on the site. Use code ACE for 15% off any membership, and it's definitely going to help you start winning more games and have a lot more structure on both offense and defense. Okay, now let's talk about the counter blitz setup. It is basically going to be the same thing. I want to show you the four man versus a blocked running back first so you guys can really see how a blocked running back is going to pick this up like pretty much every time because he does change the blocking and it just targets him so much easier. Not that the pressure is necessarily bad. It's just not going to come in clean pretty much ever versus a blocked running back. So let's do it one more time. Then I'll show you the blitz that'll come in most of the time versus a blocked running back. So it's basically the same thing. You just do the same steps, get into the gap here, and then just blitz the left of screen slot cornerback. That's pretty much your your added wrinkle. And this will come in, I'll say, most of the time because what's going to happen is the running back is going to target the slot cornerback and the linebacker can still come in clean. Now, I have no idea if there is like a labbed up pass protection for this where you know you ideas outside slot cornerback or whatever and really get your offensive line to really target everybody properly i don't know if that's a thing i'm sure it is i'm sure there's a way to pick this up but as you saw just this random blocked running back is not going to get it done most of the time somebody is going to come clean so the last thing i want to talk about is the weakness of this blitz and i've already talked about it briefly and it's really just the fact that you can't flip your blitz. That's a pretty big deal in regards to predictability, what you can do on defense as far as coverage adjustments. And I'll talk about them very briefly. So first of all, let's just look at the blitz when you flip it, just to show you that it sucks. So flip, right of screen linebackers now blitzing. Same setup as the previous. We'll just hover right here. And let's just see what happens. As you can see, the pressure, not very good. And I believe it was the right tackle who like picked him up, which is kind of crazy to me. Let's watch the right tackle. Notice how he just like, he shuffles over and picks him up pretty much beyond the line of scrimmage, which is extremely unnatural. I have no idea why it's coded like this. EA has so many weird little things in their game like this. Just like little inconsistencies year in and year out which i mean i hate it i hate when they have stuff like this because it just doesn't make sense it should work the same on the same other side of the field but anyways uh that's what we're what we have to deal with i'll do it maybe one more time just to show you that's gonna happen again and again as you can see right tackle is psychic and picks him up now for those of you who don't think that's a big deal you're partially correct i don't think it's like the biggest deal in the world it just does limit what you can do and i'll give you an example of how it can affect you so we'll run it the proper way now where we run it off the left side but now let's say your opponent has been blocking his running back and picking up a four man so we're like okay i'm gonna blitz my slot cornerback now i need this pressure to come in well what your opponent can do if he's a good bunch user is mix up if he's blocking his running back or sending him out so let's say they're in verticals like we are right now and they wheel the running back this is an insanely good zone blitz beating combination because basically what happens is you have the tight end going to the seam and you have the running back going to the seam and that's going to be really good versus a zone blitz so let's go ahead and look at it what you're going to see they could throw this guy immediately yes you can make like a scissors adjustment and make the outside cornerback manned up to the running back and maybe take that away but since we're using on the right side of the field, it's very hard for us to get over there. He can just throw him hot as soon as he sees this slot cornerback blitzing. If you do the scissors adjustment, then yeah, you can take that away. But I mean, the, the truth is you can't do that all game. That's very predictable and there's ways to beat that as well. So that is, in my opinion, the downside of doing this um, or of having a play where you can't flip because ideally, sometimes you wanna be using the running back side be a little closer to him. But overall, it isn't the biggest deal in the world. I just wanted to show you that, you know, there are weaknesses to the, the splits. It's not like the most game breaking thing in the world. However, I do think it's better than 6-1 where, you know, you're praying for a disengage as opposed to a labbed up blitz that's going to come in clean. 
Anyways, that's going to be it for the breakdown. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Please drop a like if you did. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more Madden 24 content just like this. And then if you guys want to win more games, make sure to join acemadden.com. Become a member. You'll gain access to every single offense and defense that we have on the site right now. And you guys will definitely start winning more games. I'll see you guys in the next one.